When I was 10 years old, during a Thanksgiving trip to Richmond, Virginia, my dad sustained a fall. Upon impact, his knee landed at the perfect point of flexion, resulting in his patella shattering into 15 pieces and the shards of bone ripping through his ACL. The image of his knee at the time of injury is still very vivid in my mind to this day. Now, these were archaic times before smartphones, so I unfortunately or fortunately don't have a photo for you. His accident was awful, and I was able to watch his recovery over the next year. It was my first exposure to orthopedic trauma, the corresponding rescue, the need for same-day emergency surgery, the recovery, the rehabilitation, and the bane and beauty of injury. I have countless stories of accidents and injuries I have responded to and provided care for in a professional capacity over the last 20 plus years. And witnessing my dad's accident was the first spark of my interest in medicine. Now, before you think this is another one life hands you lemons talk, allow me to explain what I mean and provide a little background so you understand the reference to the bane and beauty of injury. Within Michigan Athletic Medicine, I am part of an incredible team of over 30 athletic trainers who provide patient-centered, innovative healthcare through evidence-informed practice and interprofessional collaboration. We provide a variety of healthcare services to the student athletes, focusing primarily on prevention, but also evaluation, treatment, rehabilitation, and recovery. Nationwide, athletic trainers work in many different settings, such as sports, performing arts, industrial, occupational health, armed forces, and many more. Specifically within collegiate athletics, we also serve as the primary facilitators of emergency response and preparedness should the need arise. And the student athletes at Michigan inspire me every day. And I'm grateful to them not only for their trust in me to provide health care, but also their assistance in preserving my youth. The, the opportunity to work with them is very unique, and I learn from them every day, and it's invaluable. It is fair to say most athletic trainers pursue the profession when they experience an injury of their own or witnessing one as I did with my dad. Specific to the details of each injury mechanism, and response and recovery, each experience has taught me how to prepare and provide better care to the next person. And I also make it a point to experience the care that I provide so I can provide a firsthand account and better support a patient's understanding of expectations, sensations, and responses to treatment. In short, athletic trainers have to walk the treatment walk. Case in point. As I explain to my student athletes every year before the start of double day practices, there is not a treatment or a rehab that I will provide that I have not experienced myself. And I share this to say that I'm willing to take a course that requires 18 needles to be placed in my face <laughs> so I can provide a firsthand account as to whether or not that treatment will be helpful. Athletic trainers work relentlessly and understand the drive and the sense of urgency that's required to return our student athletes to safe participation. And of course, the opportunity to work with the current student athletes would not be possible without those who wore the team uniform before them. And the athlete that I have worked with the longest and have learned from consistently, even prior to my time as a student at Michigan, is my husband, Theo, who is here today. He has witnessed the evolution of my athletic training journey and continues to be a consistent source of support, invaluable honesty, and encouragement after all of these years. And a simple thank you does not express my gratitude. It is fair to say that, like I said, athletic trainers uh, pursue the profession after experiencing an injury of their own. And 
We also serve as um, emergency responders from the sideline. And we do everything we can to prepare as best we can, but sometimes there's an imperfection, unfortunately. So speaking of perfection, the golden ratio serves as a representation of perfection, yet it is also an irrational number. It can't be sliced perfectly. Same from a healthcare perspective. Health and well-being isn't perfect. Physicians obtain their medical license to support your health and well-being, not perfect it. When a friend or a loved one falls ill or injured, you say, wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you get well soon, not I hope you get perfect. Or I hope you feel better soon, not I hope you feel perfect. The same can be said when understanding the imperfections of your injury and recognizing that there can be some hiccups along the way. Throughout the injury evaluation process, an athletic trainer has a responsibility of looking at the site above and below the injury to ensure that there aren't any missing pieces or niches that may were previously unknown and taking the opportunity to address those during the rehabilitation process may or may not afford an opportunity to improve um, performance on the other side of the injury. And sometimes that's a welcome discovery, and in others it adds to the imperfect. And while athletic trainers work to prepare for our practices and competitions every day, and we do a pretty good job, I will say there is no level of drilling or preparation or strategic planning that will perfectly prepare us for every possible incident. And thinking in this way is also irrational. But the beauty comes when we have an opportunity to perform our skills under pressure because preparedness brings calm. Preparedness brings calm. And simply put, the world did not care that I was five months pregnant when the pandemic began. My husband and I were happy to learn that in November of 2019, we were expecting our son in July of 2020. And the world significantly changed in the interim. And my type A, plan every detail self, had to choose to embrace the imperfect, discover the unknown, or drown in frustration. This was coupled with a phone call from my boss who let me know that my participation or contributions at work would be modified to a remote format for the time being, as we did not know the impact of COVID-19 on expectant mothers at that time. And for the first time in my athletic training career, I was benched. Benched. I had to adjust my expectations on many aspects of my life, including placing less of an emphasis on perfection and supporting the well-being of those around me. And of course, again, navigating the uncharted territory can be tricky. So as a girl who was born in the Motor City, I will leave you with a car analogy or at least ask you a question. Have you done everything to the best of your ability to prepare for the terrain of life's road? From a medical perspective, preventative medicine is best. It's your best defense, offense, depending how you look at it, to prevent injury and illness. And guess what? The same applies to your car. Don't wait for your check engine light to tell you to pay attention to your health. If you had a slip and fall and saw your knee turn to mush, your femur and your tibia completely distracted and your patella shattered in 15 pieces, you would ask for help, right? Right? I hope so. <laughs> Therefore, give time and attention to any mental scar tissue you may be experiencing. It is easy to overlook the invisible aspects of injury and mental health. You don't need to be in crisis to get help, and there is always someone to call. One common thing I've seen many athletes across different sports have difficulty understanding and accepting are the post-injury imperfections after they have returned to full participation. 
what is difficult to see and even understand and comprehend in the literal sense is that when a tissue is damaged, be it ligament, muscle, tendon, skin, scar tissue heals in its place. Scar tissue has different elastic properties than the tissue with which you were born. It is organized differently. It affects joint position and awareness. It has a global effect on overall biomechanics. And it becomes interlaced into how you physically function. Scar tissue literally has the responsibility of stitching you back together. And taking the time to recognize that the original tissue with which you were born will never be the same ever again. Choosing what you do with this new normal is the last and most important piece of recovery. And while recovery involves the self-reflection, evaluation, and decisions about what to do with the unknown, it is also an opportunity to ask for help. And like I said, simply put, the world did not care that I was five months pregnant when the pandemic began. Your calendar doesn't care whether or not you have three exams in one week. And the game of life doesn't know or care whether or not the last pitch across your plate was a ball or a strike. The only person who cares or is aware of those things is you. Therefore, you're the only person who can speak up and ask for help. And there is help. You're the only person who can be prepared as best you can. And again, preparedness brings calm. Working with multiple championship caliber teams is a highlight of working at a place like Michigan Athletics. But it is not the sole reason that I do what I do as an athletic trainer. I do what I do because the healing ability of the human body and mind is fascinating and imperfect. I do what I do to see others realize their own capabilities when the game of life pre presents them with a test. So I ask you this, how will you respond the next time life affords you the opportunity to embrace the imperfect? Ask yourself, how strong am I? And take the time to be surprised. This is one of the many lessons I provide to my patients that I hope is carried by them well beyond their athletic careers. And I hope that you were able to learn from this as well. And it didn't require an injury to do so. Thank you, and go blue.